All right, I, see, I feel like I'm sitting down like for like an interview or something like that. But what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I hope y'all don't mind if I jump straight into the video on this particular one. If this your first time uh, being with us, welcome to the channel. Um, I hope that this video helps you out in some kind of way before you apply to the program or if you've already got accepted into the program we're gonna throw you a congratulations real quick but I'm gonna jump straight in on this video in the last video I pretty much talked about how you can utilize and maximize on your program and how your future self will be proud of you for um, going into the program sticking it out and all of that blah 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 so we talked about that but in this video what I want to do I want to take a deeper dive and just really go in depth on my experience not just my experience but the black experience how I got introduced to this program it was kind of a funny story and it almost seems made up uh, when I tell people people you know a lot of times don't believe me when I bring this up but I actually saw a flyer on the ground heading to the library that's how I, library that's that's how I found out about the program and so I had some things go on uh, I was at I was in school uh, in college at the University of Southern Mississippi, actually played college football for the University of Southern Mi Mississippi. We went on to win the 2011-2012 uh, championship, uh, conference championship, uh, end up winning a uh, bowl game, played Hawaii. Uh, and fast forward, I was about to get out of school. I needed an internship. I was a hospitality major. And so on my way to the library, I saw this flyer. And it was talking about Disney College program and talking about the different uh, roles and jobs that you can get within the program. And I'm like, man, hold on. I wonder would this qualify as an internship? And so I went and talked to my counselor. I ended up finding out that I could, in fact, use that program as a part of my internship that was required to graduate. I actually had some other things going on at that particular time. Uh, I was... Uh, Let's just say for the lack of better terms, I tried to start my own uh, pharmacy. Ended up getting in a little bit of trouble uh, at school. And so I wanted to like change my environment, get a fresh start, get a clean slate and just rebrand myself. And so that's what I decided to do. That's what the Disney experience going into it was all about for me. And lo and behold, I just picked up the flyer and said, you know, let me go to this thing. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some girls in here. I can't remember how long it was from the moment I saw the flyer until the, the presentation was. But during that presentation, uh, I looked out, I looked around the room and, you know, I, I didn't really see a lot of people that looked like me. Um, but what kept me from walking out of that room was the presenter. And I actually put up a picture of the presenter right here. Uh, this guy right here that you guys are looking at, uh, he, his story kind of resonated with mine. That's why it's so important. Uh, that's that's why I feel like inclusion and diversity is important, N not on some, you know, affirmative action type of stuff, but like really being like a, a, for a company to be like really inclusive, you know, and because if this guy wasn't in the room, then I don't think I probably would even like try the program. Uh, he was an ex college uh, athlete, just like I was. And he was talking about how he went through the program, how it helped him out and how uh, sometimes life after sports is, you know, it's a difficult life. And I just didn't want to uh, forever try to live in uh, those moments of what I used to be or uh, become a has-been. And so I decided, you know, it's, it's, it's time to start thinking about what life's going to look like for me when I'm 30, when I'm 40. You know, and so that was one of the reasons why I went on top of, you know, I thought it was going to be some girls and that too. You know, I said that kind of low cut my wife downstairs, you know, but that was the that was the mindset, you know, at the time. And so when I was in that room, uh, it was everything that I needed to hear. I went ahead and decided to apply for the program. I think at that time, the rumor was about three thousand thirty thousand people would like apply a year or something like that for the program. And they would only accept, I think it was 5,000. My numbers may be off, but basically it was a lot of people applying for the program. And it was few people getting selected. So I just thought my chances of being selected was probably slim to none. As the meeting adjourned, if you will, there was actually uh, a young lady that 
I knew of wasn't really that close, but she was a friend of a friend. And she was like, "What? Hey, what are you doing here?" And uh, I was just like, "Hey, I'm just coming to check this out, and I'm thinking about applying to the program." And she had basically shared her story with me on how she had uh, went through the program and uh, some of the the relationships she had and, and bonds she had formed, and that she still had to that day. And that further gave me courage to go ahead and apply. So upon getting selected. I got chosen to do an assessment. Once you apply, it's not an answer right then, but there's another phase that you go through where I had to do an assessment, end up passing the assessment, end up moving on to the phone interview. Upon my phone interview, I just talked about my experiences as I had never had a job uh, before. And so basically, I just talked about my time and playing sports and the leadership things that I learned along the way. And so fast forward, ended up getting selected. And they told me that in my email, uh, it was going to tell me what role I had got selected for. When I originally applied, I think I did, I can't remember what I selected. It gave me like three things that I, that I would want to apply for. And I didn't get selected for any of them. I actually got selected for housekeeping. And I was kind of, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Initially, I was kind of bummed out about that because I'm like, okay, I'm working in a resort. Okay, you know, this is definitely going to be within my hospitality, tourism uh, field. So this is going to help me in some kind of way. So I looked at the bright side when it came to that, but I was still kind of pissed. Like, man, I chose front desk. I know front desk was one of the three jobs I chose and I got chosen for housekeeping. But I think that was one of the best decisions or one of the best, I think that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because now when I go to resorts and when I go to hotels, like my wife will tell you, I'm super particular about how we lead that place. Whether we're going out for the day or whether we're checking out, uh, I'm really particular about leaving tips. I'm uh, like, I'm so crazy to the point to where I take all the sheets off the bed. <laughs> I take all the towels that we use and I put it in a nice you know, little pile by the door, you know, because I know at most resorts, there's a person that comes around and initially collect that stuff. And then the uh, actual housekeeper, they'll come in and do the cleaning and stuff. So that's, that's just one of the minor things that it taught me as far as like attention to detail and leaving things better than what I found it or leaving things how I found it. There was a culture centered around creating top tier experiences and perfection was almost like the ceiling and so um those that's like one of the minor things that stuck with me out of all the other things that i kind of talked about in my previous video i ended up starting my program january of 2013 and so i went out there with uh no car i actually left my car back home because i didn't trust it driving all the way to orlando uh, but that's a that's a that's a key within itself. If you can take your car to Orlando and have wheels, like you will be the man or the girl. Now, once I got the keys to my apartment and all that stuff, my roommates were actually already inside of the apartment. I think I was the last person to get there. And man, when I tell y'all, I couldn't I couldn't have landed the like I landed some really really good roommates. When we initially got there, I mean, it was just us playing video games. Us just doing what guys do, uh, connecting, getting to know each other. Um, I had another black roommate, um, Dip. We called him Dip or, or, or Brian. Um, and, you know, really, really solid, really solid guy. I think him, Manolo, and uh, Chris Meister. Y'all know they call me Deuce Meister, so that was a match made in heaven. Uh, his last name was Meister. So those were the first three I met. I think I think the other one was like out doing stuff with his girlfriend. I had one that had a girlfriend there and all that type of stuff. But um, so yeah, we just played games. Got the, got a chance to know each other. I, you know, kick those guys ass and uh, 2K and we played some mad and you know just doing what guys do, man. And uh, I think that night or that next night or where like we went to Buffalo Wild Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings in Orlando used to turn into like a whole vibe <laughs> like on Wednesdays and so I think we actually got there on a Wednesday if I'm not mistaken I might be getting my days mixed up but I know we did that upon getting to the program and so the first 
48, 72 hours, just really just getting a chance to know each other and, you know, uh, unpacking and, you know, I, you know, back when you're young, you know, you're trying to get your stuff in and get outside the apartment to go meet people and stuff like that. So uh, I remember us going and, you know, getting outside of our apartment and going and, you know, just walking around the, the apartment complex or whatever. We stayed at Vista Way. I'm not sure if Vista Way is still a part of, uh, still partnering with the pro. We would go and we would grocery shop and do like a big grocery shop once a week. And we would go to like Sam's Club or Costco, just rack up for a whole week. And um, a couple of my roommates, uh, they could cook really good. And uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good cook myself. And so we never went without like food and stuff like that. So uh, it was that was that was a good experience. Just being able to have uh, be able to live with guys that, that knew how to cook, that weren't really nasty. My roommates, for the most part, they were um, pretty clean cut guys. So, you know, we never had any fights about uh, anybody being messy or anything like that from from what I could remember. And so uh, we hung out a lot. Unlike. Uh, some people we saw on the program, a lot of people didn't hang out with their roommates, but I actually hung out with my roommates, went to the parks uh, with them. Uh, we had a really good time. So uh, it was, uh, had an Asian roommate, a few white roommates, and I had a, uh, a black roommate. At that time, believe it or not, it seems like I'm like listening to a lot of roommates, but Back then, it was two people to a room. So, it was two twin beds, and it was two people to a room. I'm not sure if they still do it like that now, but just even thinking back on that, like, that was that was wild. You know, even though that's, like, typically what, that's how you, you know, it's basically dorm living, you know, like in college or whatever. Um, but um, I said all that to say, man, I got, I, I had some really good, good roommates, and like I said, I left my car back home, and so those guys would all the time, you know, let me, you know, um, jump in with them. We'd just usually take one or two cars and just go rack up, you know, on groceries and, and eat good for a week. So fast forward a couple of days later, it was time for, like, our orientation, um, the, the orientation that we had for, like, our, our roles, our jobs or whatever. So becoming new cast members. And I remember going into that room and just, you know, you learn a lot about the mouse, learn a lot about the company, how it started. You know, they play all the different videos and stuff like that. Believe it or not, on that day, that orientation, that new hire training or whatever, I found out me and Mickey Mouse share the same birthday. <laughs> so I'm a November 18th Scorpio baby. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, uh, so I think it was like another few days until we I actually... I uh, went to my location of what I was going to be working at. I worked at the Disney Yacht and Beach Club. Uh, that's me right there. And so at the Disney Yacht and Beach Club, uh, we had these uniforms. And they had this whole room where they called it the... Uh, they didn't call them uniforms. They called them costumes. And when you would go backstage, a.k.a. Places that was employee only, it would say cast members only or something like that. So we would go in there, we would get our uniforms, pick out like five pair of pants, five shirts, pick out a blazer if you want that for some of those some of those cold months or whatever. Uh, pick out a vest, a belt. Only thing you really had to buy yourself, I think, was shoes. And so, me just, you know, being a stylish person, like I'm, I'm, I'm not. A fashionista like I'm not overly in the fashion but I like looking nice so instead of going and getting some some hospital shoes or some nursing shoes some white shoes uh, I went and got me some loafers <laughs> so got me some nice some nice soft cushiony loafers I knew I was gonna be on my feet a lot and you know back then I you know I was young so I knew at times man those loafers was probably gonna hurt my feet which they did sometimes but Hey, I look, I look good. Sometimes swag takes sacrifices sometimes. I end up, you know, working at the Disney Yacht and Beach Club, like I said. And so we would do these breakout meetings. Um, the job was pretty cool. And I, I worked with uh, Asians, Haitians. I worked with Dominicans. I worked with uh, Costa Ricans. I, I mean, literally any, 
any type of person you could think of. Like I, I probably worked with them or or did the program with them at Disney, and so um, it was totally different than what I thought because I mean, of course, Florida is it's still the South, so you do have to keep in mind that it like it was a couple of bad apples, like some of the some of the full time employees who weren't really open you know to opening up to some of the cast members and uh you 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 know you you have some of the some of that some of that tension you could you could kind of feel when you go outside of that disney boat some some of that some of that uh good old backwoods southern uh none hospitality you kind of felt that but as long as i was in that in that bubble within doing disney type events or working or stuff events or working or something like that i really didn't experience any um crazy racism anything like that but you, you just never know i tell you like I t my folks tell me you got to keep your head on a swivel just be aware of your surroundings the typical stuff you be you should be doing regardless of if you're in florida or canada like no matter where you are, you know, keeping your head on the swivel. And that's something that I tried to, you know, make sure I maintain while I was down there. Like, although I was in this uh, everything is fairy tales type of world, like I still had to keep in mind that, hey, you know, this is the South. Hey, I'm black, you know, <laughs> and I'm kind of like an oddball here because, I mean, there's a few tricks of us here and there. But the program was predominantly uh w white people you know international people you know and so there weren't a lot of black people during my time at disney and so a lot of people back home looked at it like wow like they looked at it like a big deal because i went and i decided to step out on faith and do that program but you know to me it was it was just nothing I, i've always wanted to like challenge myself and See what more I can become. Because you know, being stagnant is just not a good feeling. It's not really a good thing. There's no growth that comes from continuing to stay stagnant. So work life. Work life was good. I had I had a lot of great connections with uh, my, my, my co-workers. My co-workers, most of them were older than me. If they weren't in the program, they were older than me. But they, they took me in. A lot of those, a lot of those uh, older women, I still call mom, like, to this day. Like, they would literally, like, bring their lunch and bring me some food, too. So, I had a lot of uh, Haitian, a lot of, had a lot of Haitian uh, co-workers um, that, like, literally took me in as a son. I had a uh, Dominican, uh, she was like a grandmother. A Dominicana, she was like a grandmother to me, man. Like, like treating me really nice. Literally, still uh, keeping contact with her on Facebook. Uh, we had an Asian couple that was that was pretty cool. Uh, they pretty much it was a husband and wife. They kind of kept to themselves, but I was able to I was able to get them to open up, and uh, they opened up, and uh, I would hang out with them here and there um, at work and. I also had uh, another lady uh, who was from the UK, and so she, I used to give her hair a lot of time because she used to say bloody hell, you know, and so uh, she worked a late night shift, so whenever I got a late shift, like that 6 to 2 o'clock in the morning type of shift, she was always doing that shift, and um, I always just had a good time and just cut up with her. And so I, I, I really, I really like enjoyed myself and, 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 the, and the people um, really embraced me and, and took me in as like a little brother or a son or, or a friend. And that was one of the parts that, that kind of made the experience a lot better for me, um, being that um, I'm all about family. I'm all about unity and, and, and having people come together, having a good time, making people laugh. Like that's always been me. And so it was that times a hundred uh, while I was in Orlando, Florida. It was it, it was like literally fun and love on steroids when it came to my coworkers, my roommates, uh, other friends that I met throughout the program. 
and it was it was just a blast. Now speaking of having a blast, I know y'all thought I would never get to this topic, but there's ton of events, man. There's always something going on. Always a a winter farm, or it's always a a pool party. It's always a this night, a movie night, or that night, or this night, and it's all they always got something going on. So the networking opportunity that you have because a lot of times okay you're working you're at your apartment um you you gotta realize there's people that's not only in your complex that's all cast members but there's other complexes where it's just all cast members like four or five six different complexes where it's just all cast members and so there's so many different opportunities and events for you to mix and mingle get to know people and stuff like that uh they had different events inside of the parks at the hours for us. And I took advantage of all those different things. You know, I had the opportunity to meet people from all over the place. And like I said in my last video, I can spin a globe right now in any continent except except Antarctica. And I can literally stop at any continent and I know someone that lives in that continent where I can literally get on a plane, fly there, and have somebody to just kick it with here in present day and so that experience within itself being able to say that within itself for me made made it worth it because about five years removed from my program i think back in like 2018 or something like that 19 um, i had some friends that i met from spain a huge group of friends that that, that took me in we kicked it a lot and they were all together back in um they were all together back in Madrid and they FaceTimed me and man, it was, it was just incredible. And just thinking about all the good times that we had, uh, a lot of the fun outings that we had. Oh, I mean, those guys are crazy. You talking about having a good time. Like this, this, the Spaniards, man, they, they, those are some wild dudes. And so I don't know who was wilder between the, 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 the Spaniards and the, the, the French, like, those two were like the, yeah, yeah, they, they, was, they was some wild, some wild folks. But, yeah, you know, there was, there was always something to do, whether it was Monday, Tuesday, when the party bus seemed like it was coming to pick you up every day. You know, a trip to Miami every week, it felt like, you know. And so um, had a had a chance to do a couple of those things, uh, go out to Miami a couple of times while I was out there. Uh, in Florida, had a couple days off, went out to Miami, um, did the whole party bus things, a thing a few times, did the whole Buffalo Wild Wings thing on Wednesdays, and I mean we just we just had a blast, man. You know back then you could get you could get a ah uh, oh, what's some things called tequila sunrise <laughs> that we used to get tequila sunrise for two dollars. You know get get tequila sunrise for two dollars. You know you just got paid. And, you know, I remember it used to be moments where I would spend like $20, you know, at the bar. Like, because I, you know, I did nightlife back at school and back at home. You spend $2, you may get two drinks, you know. You may get two drinks. But some of the places that we went, $2, two, not Long Island. But, yeah, I think it was $2 Long Island, iced tea, $2 tequila sunrise. I would drop $20 and come with the tray. Yeah, come on, you know, and, you know, drinks on me, drinks on me, just passing them out, just making sure everybody around me having a good time. You know, a lot of time it was random, sometimes it was people that I came with, man, and um, we just, we just have a good time, just, just doing what 20, you know, 20 year old, 21, 22, 23 year old people do, you know, that's what, we, that's what we did. There was no shortage, like on the phone, and unfortunately, you get some people that, that were in the program that I knew. Uh, that they had a little bit too much fun, and I I experienced some of my friends end up getting terminated from the program because they just was yeah doing some doing some doing some things that got them in some 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 trouble. I just say that uh, I'm not gonna go into detail on that, but got terminated from the program, and sometimes. I saw people even self-terminate uh, with missing family and um, because they didn't take advantage of the opportunity of networking and getting out of their shell if they if they were an introvert. 
not me, new people. Hey, one of my roommates, one of my roommates, um, he was a, he was an introverted person. He wasn't really going out like that. It was it had to be something special going on for him to like really step out with us. And even then, he make sure he drive. He wasn't taking no party bus. He would make sure he drive. So when he was done having fun, he would like literally go back to the apartment, and we'll just see him there when we get back. When we got back, so man. You know, you just have to you just have to get down there. Like I say, be aware of your surroundings and stuff like that. Um, and do realize when you're out at these places, you you know, sometimes there are locals and um, other tourists that are going to these these different places too. So you just gotta be mindful of not only protecting your personal brand, but protecting the Disney brand as well. So that's why it was kind of a no BS policy when it came to certain things. That's why they would uh, terminate people. Um, but yeah, man, you know, like I said, it wasn't no shortage of fun, you know, man, I, I saw crazy, man, I don't even want to say some of the crazy stuff I saw in like some of these, some of these parties, because I don't want some of y'all parents to be looking at my video <laughs> and tell you, oh no, <laughs> just because of, you know, some things I can share, you know, but man, I will say, uh, for the most part, the people were cool. You know, I had cool roommates, cool, uh, people that I met, uh, even like, speaking of these events, they had uh, a basketball tournament one time that I had a couple of guys, a uh, random group of guys that I just joined the team and we just traded a team or whatever. Uh, they had a basketball tournament that we ended up winning and we won free tickets to the Tampa Bay Rays baseball game. And so we got a chance to go out there, hang out, at uh, Tropicana Field, and it's so it's such a surreal moment because uh, one of the bowl games that we played in college, it was played at Tropicana Field. So I was like, man, that's crazy. But anyway, so yeah, a few of those guys I still communicate with to this day, you know. And so that's what you becoming a part of. It's like one big, it's, it's one big happy family, man. That's that, that's what it is at the end of the day. And letting go of that is is probably one of the toughest feelings, you know, the people you meet. You know, um, some of the some of the neighbors that I had, even like some of the neighbors that I had uh, that stayed like in my building, you know, some of the coolest people. We had people from Australia, people from Puerto Rico, uh, I got friends from Mexico, friends from uh, Colombia, friends from El Salvador, friends from Guatemala, like. You know, I end up even having an opportunity. Like, I tell you this, like, so after the program, uh, it was about six months after my program. And when spring break rolled around, like, I literally booked the flight. I had uh, a group of friends from Guatemala. And their parents had came and visited. I got a chance to meet their parents. And literally, one of my friends, like, I said, hey, you should come out to Guatemala during spring break. And come hang out with us. And I was like, you know, why not? And so I went out to Guatemala, spent time uh, with their family. So I, I was at two different households. I was there for like eight days. So for four days, I stayed with this family. For the other four days, I stayed with the other family. And, man, we just had a blast, man. You know, got, getting the chance to break bread with them and eat. Be welcoming into their culture. And so that experience wouldn't have happened like if I would have never picked up that flyer that day. And so I know this I know this video was 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 long, it was drawn out and you know all those different things, but uh, I kind of wanted to go more into detail on my personal story. Um once I graduated after that first 6 months, so the first 6 months it was like the graduate class and then I went on to extend, like I said a couple of my roommates they end up moving on uh from the program and we had a couple more roommates come in. Uh, who were who were who were pretty cool too. Um, my roommate that passed was a part of that. Uh, my extended program, um, and man, wow, fella, used to have us in the in the apartment listening to country music, square dancing, you know, and uh, people just loved him. He was like the white version of me, you know, just uh, just a fun dude, just just the just he was like a it was like a light. <laughs> That just brightened up the room when he walked in the room. That's that's how Steven was, man. You know, uh, real cool dude. But overall, man, when I when it, when it was time to leave, like 
man, it was it was really tough. You know, it was really tough um, because that experience like really changed my life. Like the path that I was going down six months before I went into that program, a dark path, and could have gotten some some life altering trouble before applying to the program. And so I remember renting the car. I remember renting the car and I remember driving back home with all my stuff packed up. And I'm like, man, I was just crying. And I'm like, man, this thing ain't changed my life. Like this thing ain't really real deal changed my life. And I'm really thankful for the experience. I really, really am. And I, I think as a as a black man, my view on how other cultures see me was so limited to I saw in Birmingham, Alabama, and where things were like in Alabama. Well, I had a white roommate from upstate New York. And man, like I say, one of the coolest guys you'll ever meet. You know, not saying that there aren't people from where he's from that operate like people in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm not that crazy. I know it's people like that up there too, but I didn't run. I didn't run into too much of that during my program because you know we were all there for the same reason, and pretty much people that apply to this program they're happy-go-lucky type type folks. Sometimes they're you know they're quiet, they're secluded type of people. You know, um, so it's, it's crazy how you had that mixture. They're either going to be quiet, secluded, introverted, or they're just going to be off the chain. Like it's really no middle. It's really no middle ground uh, when it comes to, when it comes to the people that you meet. Um, but that's my experience in a nutshell, you guys. I've already talked about life post program and uh, what it's allowed me to do, um, the friendships and bonds that I still have to this day. You know, whether that's Africa, whether it's Europe, Australia, whether it's uh, the, here in the U.S., South America, North America, where I mean, literally wherever. Like, I highly suggest you go into the program, you take things for what they are, you find the best in things, and you just be yourself. Network and your energy will attract the people that you're supposed to meet. I feel like the energy that I put out attracted the good people that that I met, that I still um, have connections and, and bonds with to this day. And so I wish the same for you guys. All right, so y'all get the picture. Y'all get to the picture at this point. Basically, all I've been trying to say this entire video is apply to the program. <laughs> That's like apply to the program. It's worth it. All right. I'll see y'all in the next video. Deuce the dope dad. Peace.